I'm Leah Lawrence. And I'm her husband, Mitch Lawrence. And you are listening to the Southern Spirits Podcast, where I regale my husband with Southern stories of the macabre, creepy, and strange. And I drink... So what are you drinking tonight, Mitchell? Well, our beer tonight is OBP2 Honey Pilsner, brewed by OBP LLC in Lakeland, Florida. It's 11% alcohol by volume. Let's read the can. And they seem like fun people. Okay. What does OBP stand for? Uh, yeah, I probably Orange should have said that. Blossom. Orange Blossom Brewing, I guess. I don't know what the P is about, but, uh, well, actually it's in there. So let's just get okay. there. Okay. Cool. Here we go. go. Let's read the can. Ready? When you brew coffee using only half the water, you get a pretty potent pot of java, right? Which got us thinking, why not try that with beer? So we took our original orange blossom pilsner, cut the water, and voila freaking la, pot of awesome sauce we call OBP2. A double dose of all natural ingredients, including real orange blossom honey. No refined sugar. 11% alcohol by volume. It's the bee's knees, bras. End quote. These seem like my kind of people, Leah. I mean, if you put "wa frickin' la" on a can, you're taking a chance, you know. How did they spell that though? V o i dash frickin' with the apostrophe. Okay. Dash la. Good because it. <laughs> one of my biggest pet peeves on the face of the planet is people spelling "voila." W A L wa la. I've never seen that. Oh my god! People in a bunch of crafting. Um, <laughs> So I'm in a bunch of crafting groups on Back Facebook. Back to the beer. This beer Y'all. is deceptive. The sweetness from the honey masks the high alcohol sweetness. So it's hard to know that you're having too much, which I think is absolutely perfect. It's sweet, smooth, and simple. Like It really it doesn't have a lot that makes you think, oh, this is 11%. I need to slow down. It's really good. Give it an 8 out of 10. Leah tried it. What'd you think? Um, it's an interesting flavor. I'm not a huge fan of honey in the first place, uh, but you can get those like honey notes. It's yep. it's sweet, but it's not so sweet that it gives away that 11%. Because a lot of the times when you get like an imperial stout or something like that, that's that high of an alcohol mm-hmm. volume, uh, it's a lot sweeter than that. Yeah. That is a pleasant sweetness. I'm not sure I love the flavor, but that's probably just personal preference. Yeah. Um, but it's nice and smooth and I really think you could accidentally fuck yourself up on those things. Yes. It they come in four packs. And good God, I've had one and a half and I'm 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 getting there. Your buzz No, I've had one. I've only had one total. See? I'm so drunk I don't even know where I am. Buzz. I don't know how many I've had. It was a bee joke. It's very good, Leah. Because of honey? Because yeah, because the can does have like a honeycomb on it and they say bees knees for the honey. And yes, it's very good, Leah. Thanks. You did great. Thanks. Our shot in the dark for the night. (laughs) Jock Jock what what? Are you okay? (laughs) I'm a little I'm having fun. (laughs) Dark chocolate coffee Appalachian sip and cream. There we go. Produced and bottled by Sugarlands Distilling Company, LLC in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Twenty percent alcohol by volume. Let's read the bottle. Our dark chocolate coffee cream liqueur is a decadent dessert drink rich in cacao and notes of roasted coffee bean. I love that word. (laughs) Cacao. It makes me so happy. (laughs) Did I say it right, though? Yes. That's how you say it, right? Yeah. It's like a comic book. Cacao. Yeah, but it's a Portlandia thing where they use the word cacao as their safe word. (laughs) And that just the word makes me laugh anytime someone says cacao. Yeah. I don't know that I've ever watched Portlandia. I need to. Let's do that right after we get done. What I have to say about the dark chocolate coffee, it's another absolutely amazing cream. Uh, For real, every one of these is amazing. And it's pretty much just chocolate milk with a tiny, tiny little bit of uh, alcohol kick. Just a tiny bit. I love it. 10 out of 10, if you can't tell. And uh, I might make a milkshake with this real soon. Yeah, would agree. Mm Mm-hmm. Or pour it over ice cream or something. Well, that's it for the alcohols, Leah. So would you like to go back to what you were saying about how people spell voila? It pisses me off. (laughs) Why the fuck would you spell voila, voila, W-A-H-L-A-H, like with a dash in between? That is just, uh, like, I'm, I'm, I, I understand you know, there, there, there is complicated. Your, your. I can, I can forgive people, and I know that's like your thing. You really hate yeah. when people use the wrong form of those. Like I get it. Oh God. Mm-hmm. But, but spelling out hua la makes me very upset. Hua la, like that. It makes me very, very upset. Yeah. That's all. 
that that is upsetting. But at least they're doing it phonetically. <laughs> so I mean, there's that. You know, I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. And it's it's oh no, I'm not even going to go there because it's I, I can already feel my blood pressure <laughs> rising just she because so I angry. hate it so much. Leah, well, look, I've just said we gotta we gotta make a change in our format that you cannot go off on a tangent while I'm in the middle of the alcohol. That has to change immediately. All right. Everybody was here for the business conversation. <laughs> Point of order. Are we sure we're going to do that? Cause... No, that absolutely won't happen. I just, I've had one 11% alcohol, by, alcohol beer and I was like, I got some nuts tonight. I'm going st- to put my fucking foot down. <laughs> the motion does not pass. Yeah. The chairman has spoken. Yay or nay. Uh, um, no one has said anything. You need unanimous consensus in this quorum to, you know, pass, pass something. So, yeah. sorry. Oh, one, thing, one thing I forgot about the alcohols, we have a very interesting shot glass for our Shots in the Dark tonight that were gotten for us, for us? For yes, us. for us by Amberly and Aaliyah from uh, the Trailer Trashy podcast, good friends of ours. They brought us candy cane shot glasses and we were like, ooh, dark chocolate coffee in the candy canes like their, their shot glass is just made out of candy cane they're very sticky <laughs> <laughs> they <laughs> do they have, have a little, little gripper at the bottom so yeah they've got little plastic sticky. things that but yeah oh man i can't wait to do that get my lips all sticky mm. that's it that's all i have okay well would you like to go into our uh sassy southern saying of the evening yes that sounds great to me all right, so this week it's not a sentence so much as it's just like a little tag-on phrase. Oh. Um, it, the phrase is, as I'll get out. At, let me try that again. All right, <clears> take <throat> it from the top. As I'll get out. Okay. So you say yeah. something is like, hot as I'll get out, or she's stubborn as I'll get out, or, mm-hmm. you know, I'll get out is a is a. Yes, I've heard this on one phrase. a lot throughout my life. Go ahead. You're not going to say what it means or? Um, well, I mean, it just means a lot. The beat, the top, the whatever, you know, as, as much as it can be, whatever that means. I mean. Yeah. So in know. the Oxford English Dictionary that does list this as a, a, a thing, mm-hmm. um, it's uh, all get out means to an extreme degree or extent. Yeah. Quote, he's mad as all get out. Um, and actually, that phrase was first published that they know of um, in literature uh, in Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Okay. Um, so that's fun. But there are a couple of different ways people spell it with a G-I-T. But uh, most of the time that I've seen it, it's just people um, like in print, people trying to do like a a southern accent written out phonetically um and it's really embarrassingly bad um you mean like how people spell (laughs) voila right i really fucking hate that (laughs) oh my god i'm stuck on that now um i'm sorry yeah but uh yeah so it's all get out so it can be anything um and it can also be a stand-in according to the etymology that i looked up it could be a stand-in for the word hell um so really? mad as hell instead of saying he's mad as hell he's mad as all get out or you know well yeah but any any kind of phrase like that is just taking the place of something else yeah. when you say mad as all get out so yeah. it doesn't actually mean hell it's just a placeholder yeah it's a it's a to an extreme degree or extent and it also a lot of the time is is in the place of uh your favorite curse word a given curse word that you <laughs> don't want to say in polite company so yeah. instead of you know uh She's stubborn as fuck. It's, you know, she's stubborn as all get out. All get out. It just means a lot. Um, so if you've never used that in a sentence, maybe use it this week. Uh, yep. Share share on the, the Southern Spirits community chat on Facebook uh, <laughs> how you used it in, in a sentence this week. I don't know. That sounds great. Yeah. Giving like, everybody homework. We, yeah. It's like uh, in <laughs> Clueless when it's like, we're going to have a word of the week. You know, <laughs> you need to find a way to use this this week. We'll do that with our sayings from now on. That's smart, Leah. Yeah. yeah I yeah, like yeah. that. Especially since we're not doing place names anymore. Use this place name in a sentence <laughs> at some point Scratch this week. ankle is the <laughs> hardest place. Yeah. Anyway. Swollen girdle. I don't that's, think that's one. It's probably one. <sighs> if it's not, that's what I'm naming my town when I get there. I'm going to get me a town, Leah. You're going to get you a town, and you're only going to get yourself a town to call it Swollen Girdle? Swollen Girdle. Coming at you. Gross. <laughs> There's so many better other names for towns than Swollen gu- gir- Girdle. That's even hard to pronounce. Skinny Girdle. 
How about that one? No, I don't like it. Why are we naming things after girdles in the first place? I don't know. That word got in my head and mm. now I'm all about it. Well, now I've gone from thinking the word girdle to thinking the word griddle. Yeah. So anyway. now let's make some flapjacks. <laughs> Bye, y'all. We'll see you next week. Look. I'm out of here. Clearly my mind is like a little flighty today, so maybe we should probably move on. Yeah, well, I'm that's super a- distracted by the wall law, so. This is your bus, baby. <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> No, it's more of a <laughs> mink, mink, <laughs> mink. When we're backing up. Oh, bless it. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, yeah, I'm a little scattered, and I apologize. But you know what? We have some lovely stories this week, and I'm going to start with the first one. And the first one comes from <laughs> Asheville, North Carolina. Start with the second one. No, I'll start with the first one. Okay. The, the notes are in order, and I don't like to deviate. Okay. Asheville, North Carolina? Asheville, North Carolina. Sounds great. So we are going to be talking about the ghost of Chicken Alley. Oh, what happens there? <laughs> what do they do there? Okay, so Chicken Alley is in... Uh, it's actually just a narrow alleyway in downtown Asheville. Um, and it was named Chicken Alley because it, back when Asheville was first starting out as a town, mm-hmm. uh, it was a place where chicken processors ha- you know had businesses set up so there okay. were always like chickens hanging out in the alley just clucking around yeah well, and then, they didn't you know, keep them under lock and key what n- no okay <laughs> like they were just clucking in the alley and uh you know they would bring them in to slaughter them and you know there was a butcher shop and all of that stuff but it was it was where the chickens were processed and where they kept the chickens and stuff there uh in, in downtown silly. Asheville. so this is silly that, it's not silly. That is legitimately what it is and what it's called. And in fact, there is a very large um, like uh, street art mural mm-hmm. there of this giant chicken and a bunch of other stuff. Anyway, this it's neat. Silly. And so if you're ever in like Asheville and you want to take a killer Instagram picture, <laughs> Chicken Alley, y'all. Hey. It's pretty great. Um, but it was that, that mural is by an artist called Molly Must. Um, so just fun what fact. What must Molly Must? <laughs> Paint chickens, I guess. Um, and there's also a lot of other like graffiti and street art. It's a it's a really prominent place, you know, to to take pictures and stuff just because of all the art on the walls. But anyway, um, not only are there fun chicken murals uh, to go check out, there's also a ghost. Spooky. Of course, there's a ghost. Yeah, there's always a ghost. So there was a man uh, back around the time that Asheville was first being founded around. Uh, the end of the 19th century, early, early 1900s, you know, um, we're looking at, uh, who, I thought I had a precise date. I think it was oh. like 1904, but I don't hold me to that. Cause I, um, once again, did not, uh, write down the right <clears throat> date. Sorry you're about so that. So poorly prepared. The best research podcast <laughs> ever. Anyway. You're doing great. Um, so there's a man named Dr. Jamie Smith and he was in fact a physician that, you know, was there and had a practice in Asheville uh, and shot in the dark. Uh It's time. It's time. (laughs) Dr. Smith was known for wearing a very distinctive type of hat. What kind of hat did he wear? Okay, a distinctive hat. A distinctive hat. (laughs) Was it A, a fedora, B, a bowler, or C, a top hat? I love a good bowler, and I'm going to say a bowler. You are not correct, Son sir. Of a bitch. All right. Well, are you going to take the shot with me? Sure. Since you have one over there in the peppermint glass? Yes. All right. Well, I, I believe it's about that time, Leah. Ready? I have, I have a holly jolly shot glass. All right. Ready? Let's Three, two, one. Mm. Make sure to lick your shot glass. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's wonderful. God, 10 out so of 10 good. would recommend. That's fun. Yeah, the peppermint shot glass. Absolutely. And when we get to the next one, pass your shot glass over. We'll take them together again. Okay. Because it's oh, like wonderful. That. And they're peppermint shot glasses. So, Unfortunately, I, mean, I just want to munch the shot glass, too. That's the, the problem. Anyway. Yeah. um, <laughs> No. So Dr. <sighs> Smith was actually well known for wearing a fedora. Oh, God. I hate him. <laughs> I hate him already. Now, it isn't the t- kind of like small brimmed fedora like you think of like yeah. neck beardy kind of dudes wear nowadays. We're talking about an <laughs> old fashioned wide brimmed Humphrey Bogart kind of fedora, not... 
Okay. Not the little tiny, skinny douchebag fedoras, you know? Well, I mean... Anyway. I'm um, still upset about it. <laughs> so, he was known for wearing a very wide-brimmed black fedora, and he wore a long duster-style coat, and uh, he always was seen carrying his black physician's bag, and he had a cane that he walked with, and it had like a silver knob on the top. Oh, Okay. Yeah, so Cute. he was a stylish Mr. Doctor uh, walking down the alley, coming back from wherever it was that, you know, he was treating patients. So Dr. Smith uh, was a physician and, and pretty well respected in the community, but he was also part of the city, and the city at the time was pretty damn rough. Mm. So it had a lot of logging camps nearby, um, you know, miners and the like, and so it was a pretty rough and tumble little pioneery kind of town at the time okay. and uh you know Asheville proper was uh oh, where people me. came in to drink and um solicit uh sex workers uh to, to ply their trade um so <laughs> basically from what I've read he got Mm. He was kept in business by what a lot of articles that I read have called, uh, uh, what was it, social uh, diseases or something like that. It, social diseases. Yeah. Gonorrhea. It, yeah. Uh, it's STDs. Okay. So he made his most of his money treating STDs and like injuries from the logging camps. But, you know, whatever. Okay. So, uh, you know. Being that it was a pretty rough and tumble area, he had a lot of work in that stuff. And he also liked to enjoy himself, uh, you know, the company of a sex worker on occasion. He had a few social diseases. He, he had a few social diseases. Yeah. And he, he was so also, good at curing them because he practiced on himself. Uh, I guess. Uh, and he also liked to drink a lot, according to the legend. So, um, you know, it was a weekend and tons of, you know, these men have come in to the weekend looking for drink and company. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there were even some out of out of town touristy kind of folks in there. And it kept the bars and the brothels open till late and, you know, in the evening. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Smith had been out for a while. And had had a great old time, and he was coming back home. And he lived down in the vicinity of where Chicken Alley is. It, it Like, he has to go down there. And there are actually a lot of people that live down that street today. There's still mm. residential apartments and stuff over the businesses. That's fun. Um, and so he was coming in late one night, and unfortunately, he walked into what was becoming a vicious bar brawl oh. uh, in the alley. So That's there so was a, a nearby bar and as he comes in to this alley, uh, people it, it's like a, a scene in a movie where people, you know, they are taking it outside um, like, what's that Christmas movie where they punch out the window and then they fight in the street? <laughs> I don't know. It's like a romantic comedy or something, and it's got uh, Colin Firth in it. Colin Firth? Oh, uh, I know what you're talking about, at least. Yeah, anyway. I'm with you. You know what I'm talking about. I yeah. don't remember the name of it. But anyway, it's kind of like one of those situations where everybody's just watching these people fight. Mm -hmm. And he's a doctor, and he definitely doesn't want to have to, like, stitch up anybody tonight. Like, he's kind of... You know, three sheets to the wind, two sheets, seven sheets. How many sheets are there? <laughs> Fuck. How many sheets could you be? He's he's sheets as all get out. <laughs> he is sheets as all get out, y'all. Yeah. Um, so clearly, he he doesn't want to have to stitch up anybody. He definitely doesn't want to, you know, like try to set any broken bones or anything like that so he sees what's going on and he's like look i'm the doctor i'm gonna break this shit up so nobody you know ends up in my office late at night because i don't want to have to deal with this bullshit hmm. um oh it was 1902 excuse me i was a couple years in advance of this but anyway so it was 1902 when all of this happened but anyway so the bar was called broadway's tavern and um, oh fun yeah, it was it was located there in Chicken Alley. And so he decided to break up these two people that were fighting. And as he goes in to break up these people, uh, one of the men in the fight turns out had a big old fucking knife. Oh, no. And instead of knifing the dude that he was pissed at, he sees this guy trying to break up the fight. And he just like stabs him through the heart. Oh. Um, which, you know, 
not great, and he dies and bleeds out there in Chicken Alley. Um, so the man that ended up murdering him was never prosecuted or caught because it was like everybody realized someone's been stabbed to death and everybody scattered, you know what I mean? Um, so they found him in the alley later the next day, um, and, you know, it was one fatal stab to the heart. Um, and ever since he was fatally stabbed through the heart, people have reported seeing his ghost oh. walking in the alley late at night. So his ghost is said to, you know, be more of a shadow figure than an actual, um, like a full figured appar- Like it's a full apparition, but it's not in like full resolution. You know what I mean? Yes. It looks more like a shade kind of situation instead of like a full color full body apparition Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a shadow man wearing a really long black coat and a wide brimmed black hat a fedora Um, of course yes and he's carrying his physician's bag and he's walking with his cane Um, and people say that one of the if you don't see the full body apparition a lot of the times you'll hear if it's like real quiet you can hear like the tapping of his cane walking down that pavement. Well, that's cute. Um, which is creepy. I don't like it. <laughs> okay. Um, but people say that they've been seeing this ghost, and there have been reports of seeing this ghost for over 100 years now, um, and they just say that it's, like, everybody oh, that's me. seen this apparition reports just a very similar appearance each time. Um, okay. And a lot of people just believe that it's Dr. Smith hanging out. Some people say that he just wants to get back home. Some people say that he's trying to still break up the fight. And some people are like, fuck it, he just needs a drink. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But yeah, so it's it's it seems to be more of a residual haunting instead of um, like an active, um, you know, sentient haunting, I guess. Um, he's just kind of there. He, yeah, it's more of like an impression, a memory, because of something traumatic that happened yeah. in that time as opposed to something that's like actively participating in, you know... Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes people get feedback from spirits. Uh, if, if you're a believer in that thing, some people believe that they get, you know, feedback from entities and stuff like this, but that's less of what's going on here and more of just like a, a memory, sort of a... It's an echo. A, yeah, exactly. An yeah. echo. I'm with you. I follow and I support it. Oh, yeah. I'm all about it. So That's would it. you go down Chicken Alley? Sure. Let's go. <laughs> There's still chickens? I, I don't think so. Just the mural. But I have always wanted to go to Asheville. That's one place yeah. I've never been. I really want to go to Asheville, too. It's just a long way away. I mean, it's not that much further than driving over Cherokee, which makes me vomit, to be fair. <laughs> but you can take the interstate instead. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's that. (laughs) Um, If you don't know what she's talking about, Cherokee, North Carolina, Mm -hmm. which is right across the border from Gatlinburg, Tennessee. So you take this mountain road that's super duper fucking twisty. And and there's a lot of 50 minutes, too. Yeah, it's about it's about an hour. um, And there's a lot. Well, depending on who's driving, but uh, please, for the love of God, don't take it further than about 50 minutes. But hiccups. But. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of fun um, historical things to stop. The drive is absolutely gorgeous, but it's a winding mountain path. Yeah. And I have severe car sickness, like any kind of motion, twisty, turny, anything like that. And then there's a lot of elevation change because yeah. it's in the fucking mountains. And so that is just a recipe for Leah to vomit a milkshake into someone's air exi- exhaust. <laughs> so, Which... <laughs> She did as a child. Yeah. Well, I was actually like 16 when that happened. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, never mind. No, I was a full on like should have been able to tell people that I was about to vomit. But yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, I vomited into my mom's car's air conditioning unit. (laughs) It smelled like rotten milk and vomit for months. They had it professionally cleaned out. And when the summer came and they had to, or excuse me, when the winter came and they had to turn the heat on. Oh, God. Oh, God. It still smelled like vomit and chocolate milkshake. Just baking chunks in there. (laughs) It was disgusting. They had to get rid of that car. (laughs) <laughs> because of that? No, it was just an old car and it was Tom. Yeah, to get rid Leah, of it don't, anyway. don't alter the story. <laughs> I mean, God. But I did vomit into the center um, 
you know how like the like vans and stuff like that have the little center with the mm-hmm. I know. With the little air blowers in the middle. Yep. I vomited all down into that sucker and it Ugh. was bad. That's the grossest story I've ever heard. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh my god. It Leah. was nasty, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. yeah mm. Anyway. I'm just glad it wasn't my car. And isn't currently my car. Oh. Please Look, don't vomit in my car. From then on out, we learned to travel with motion sickness bags in the car. Dramamine? So. That too. But I can vomit through Dramamine just as well. I took Dramamine on the on the way to... The, the only time I've ever been overseas, um, mm-hmm. I I uh, went to... I was flying into Frankfurt, Germany. And that's like a 20-something hour flight. And uh, I took like a crap ton of Dramamine and I vomited for 20 hours. Like, that's just the way my body no. works. I uh, can't help it. It's one of Leah's special skills on her resume. Indeed. Can vomit through Dramamine. <laughs> She's really good at it. Sorry, that's really gross, and I should probably stop talking about that. <laughs> oh, Leah, you're so gross. No. But hey, I'm glad we got through that story about the Chicken Alley. And uh, you think there's a brewery on Chicken Alley now? Probably. There's breweries everywhere in Asheville. I was going to say, I don't know that there's one directly there, but I guarantee you could probably walk to one from Chicken Alley. Like, yeah. easily walk to one, like, without breaking a sweat, you know? Because there's gastro pubs and breweries and all sorts of hipstery bullshit that I definitely want to sample um, all through Asheville. So. Yeah, me too. I really want to go to Asheville. The Asheville was a. Uh, a friend of mine went to a bachelor party in Asheville, and that was the first time I heard about those places that now uh, are probably non-existent at this point. Those uh, bars where you get a wristband and there's just a wall of beer taps, and you just slide your wristband and get whatever beer that you want, however much that you want. Yeah, we have one of and those I in Huntsville that. right now that serves tacos that's awesome. Yeah, we but, went once, but all the taps are closed Yeah, now. but all the taps are closed right now. Um, Someone has to bring you your pour, and it's less fun. It's way um, less fun. Yeah, but I mean, obviously, I'm not complaining. They shouldn't have people touching all the same surfaces all the time right now. I get it. But when it opens back up eventually, it's a really fun thing. Mm. would recommend. I love it. I want to do it. Again, so bad. But again, Asheville's I, the first place I heard about that. And yeah. now I want to go to Asheville just for that. But we have one we of those in Huntsville. Here. I know, but I want to go to that place. <laughs> it sounds better. I just want to go to Asheville because it seems fun and yeah. pretty. But anyway. Okay. So uh, <sighs> that was a fun first story. Chicken Alley Ghost. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. All right. So are you ready to go to the second story of the evening? I sure am. Hit me with it. All right. Well, we're doing a story out of Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville? And we are going to be talking about a ghost that haunts the Louisville Ooh. Bourbon Inn. Oh, Bourbon Inn? The Bourbon Inn. I'm all for it. Let's mm-hmm. go stay there. All right. So uh, it used to be called the Inn at the Park, but it has recently re- been rebranded as the Louisville Bourbon Inn. Mm-hmm. Um, it's an old mansion, um, like a Victorian style mansion, and it's outhouses and stuff that have been transformed into a B&B. Right. It's really cute. I looked at their website. <laughs> Very cute. It has this oh. gorgeous uh, staircase that like sort of curves up to the second floor it is absolutely stunning Uh, it's a big brick house just charming as can be i would love to stay in one but b and b is kind of i don't know i don't know that i would be cool with that yeah because there's all those other people and stuff so but i mean i think this is treated more as like an actual hotel than like a people are just running a and b you know what i mean like this is well, more of a sounds good to me though hotel-y kind of thing anyway but i would i would like to try it out um but it's really pretty um and unfortunately though it's haunted as fuck well, especially that staircase there's just creepy people that own it <laughs> i would wager anything that it's just people looking at you while you sleep i don't think so i think this <laughs> one's actually just the ghost okay. i'm sure the people who own it are lovely well and if you see. need a review of your bourbon in I would like to provide that for you. Yeah, we, you know, <laughs> just let us come stay. Just let us know. We'll let people know, hey, it's great here. <laughs> Bye. Uh, anyway, so um, 
This particular uh, place is located, for the people who know Louisville, I've only been once, so I don't know, Um, but it's located uh, on the corner of Park Avenue and 4th Street, and it's in the historic district of Louisville that's supposed to be so fucking haunted. Um, We've talked about the witch tree from Louisville, you know, the one where it's all like fucked up and weird. Don't remember. Anyway, I'm sure I'm sure I was there for it's, it. So. It was like one of the first uh, episodes, and I'll be referencing that tree later on. Yay! So uh, if you don't know what that tree is, you can go back and uh, look Stick for around. that episode. Um, and we've got that episode guide. Did we ever post that episode guide? No. That uh, one of our fo- our followers uh, actually made for us, which is freaking <laughs> yeah. awesome. Um, yeah, we need no. to pin that uh, Google Drive file to the uh, community chat. Um, but anyway, yeah. so go look for that. I'll do that tonight. We should probably um, do something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so we are going to pin that so you can look up that episode, should you care to. But it's it's the witch tree of Louisville, Kentucky. But we are yeah. talking about a ghost, and her name in life was Annie Whipple. Oh, Annie Whipple? Annie Whipple. Okay. So... Annie Whipple it was a woman that was widowed. She previously was living in New England in the late 1800s, uh, but her husband was a whaling captain, and his whaling boat was lost at sea, and he never came back, and that was sad, and she was like, fuck it, I don't want to live here anymore. Let's go west and see if we can start over, do something, you know, have have a, a a go at a second go at life you know what i mean um so she moved to uh louisville and she ended up getting a job as a live-in nanny at uh, the home of the houston family and she was mm-hmm. pretty well respected she had a bunch of kids to take care of and she was having a great time. Uh, they were a very wealthy family and they provided her a nice living. She was having a great time until um, what always happens, sickness shows up and it was in the form of the yellow fever. So at that time, yellow fever was absolutely ravaging um, cities uh, in different years here and there. But yellow fever fucked a lot of people you know towns and cities over yeah. and killed a lot of lot of people um it it was a you know pandemic situation kind of like what we're in now um weird yeah weird um and so the yellow fever struck that household and everybody got sick and she helped nurse most of them back to health everybody you know was doing okay but one of the children uh, did not fare so well. She was a little girl, and she was like one of Annie's favorite kids, like one of one of her, you know, like like the 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 favorite kid. I don't know if you have favorite kids, but like she was the favorite kid. You know, I don't have favorite kids. No, <laughs> no, I mean I don't mean you. I have a whole lot of least favorite kids though. <laughs> Most of them. But I mean, like, I've never been in a situation where I am nannying or parenting any child, but I assume that you have one that's better than the rest. And that was this child for her. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Oh, God. That's all I'm saying. Um, But, you know, she had grown very attached to this child, and she was absolutely heartbroken that the little girl wasn't getting any better. She was doing absolutely everything she could, making sure that, you know, the letter of the doctor's orders had been followed for this child, trying to get her well again. Um, But the doctor eventually comes in and is like, look, we've done absolutely everything we can. The best thing you can do right now is to prepare for her funeral and to make her as comfortable as she can be until she passes because it's just that bad and there's no more that we can do for this child well that's sweet yeah so uh annie (laughs) however absolutely refused to give up on that little girl and she stayed by the girl's bedside all day all night did everything she could to try and get that little girl to feel better again um and she you know had cold towels on her hot towels brought her tea brought her water brought everything that she could possibly want but the little girl's fever was so high that she was just in fits you know what i mean just absolutely sweating to death and just it was bad um and there was just not really much that annie could do so while she was there by the little girl's bedside waiting to do something for her you know a lot of the time when someone's sick it's just a lot of waiting to see if they get better and 
So she was sitting in the little girl's room and she would read the local newspapers um, and just read what was going on in the town. Just, you know, something to pass the time while she was caring for the little girl. Yeah. Um, And this is around the time that spiritualism was really beginning to take off in the United States. Mm -hmm. And it was less of a niche kind of wackadoo movement that a lot of people think of it now. And it was a lot more prominent. People thought of it as, you know, a little bit more, um, I don't want to say legitimate, but I mean like more, I guess acceptable is the right word, but it wasn't seen as like a, a pseudo sciencey kind of thing. It, it was it was thought of as a, lo- a lot of, you know, uh, scientists and inventors of the time were interested in this thing, you know, to see if you could scientifically prove different things, and yeah. you know, it, it was all of that kind of thing. Um, so it, it was, you know, reported in regular newspapers. Is all I'm saying. Um, so she would read different accounts of, you know, just different spiritualist stories. And for the most part, she didn't believe in that stuff. And she just didn't really care. It wasn't like a something that she sought out. But, you know, whatever. She was reading the paper and she was bored. So it kind of caught her eye. And one of the stories that she read was about a local doctor who was a an actual physician but he also kind of dabbled in spiritualism and he was known to be able to cure people that other people couldn't cure um so Sounds he, fishy, Leah. yeah so he could cure patients with all sorts of problems uh that he had been curing people that had yellow fever and that he basically just had uh, what the paper i'm sure described as miraculous you know abilities to to cure people Mm. um so annie was like well i'll be damned this is the man that i'm gonna go out and find because (laughs) i'm gonna save this little girl Mm. um if someone can help her i'm gonna try absolutely everything i don't care if it's uh you know uh, voodoo hoodoo spiritualist physician i don't care we're gonna hoodoo We're going to go get this little girl some help. Uh, So the next day, she rushed downstairs, hitched up the horse, drove over to Mm -hmm. see this Dr. Anderson. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, when she got to Dr. Anderson's house, uh, the entire house was draped in black. Um, So they used to decorate, uh, like, they had, like, swags and bunting and black and stuff when someone died in a home just to show that the house was in mourning. Because mourning used to be a really formal thing. Like, the women in the home had to wear all black, awful, heavy, terrible gowns for a year. You know, there were very specific ways that you had to outwardly show mourning in that time period. Um, And that was just one of the things. So, the house was all decked out in these black swags. And uh, turns out, Dr. Anderson had just died of yellow fever himself that day before. Oh, man. So, Annie was like, well, shit fire damn. (laughs) Shit fire damn. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this was my last fucking hope and this asshole wasn't good enough to, you know, fix himself. So why well, be shit, you know? Uh, um. <laughs> oh, Leah, that's my favorite thing in the world. And you know it. I know. We have friends. Um, we do. Well, the same ones that gave us these uh, shot <laughs> yes. glasses, Amber and Leah. Uh, it's actually Amberly that anytime she gets surprised by something, she goes, well, I'll be shit. <laughs> And apparently that's just a saying that is fine to say. (laughs) News to me. I had no idea. It's fantastic. Um, (laughs) Anyway, it's one of my favorite phrases. But yeah. um, So this this lady is absolutely heartbroken. She's upset that that was her last sort of thought as to what could could happen to to fix this girl. Yeah. So she was like, well, fuck it. The best I can do is go back and just be with her and do what I can to make her comfortable. So she goes back to the little girl's room and she's sitting there, um, you know, reading her paper, trying to occupy herself, trying to help the little girl, um, bringing her water and soups and teas and all of that stuff. So, The next day, she was reading the paper again, and she was reading a little bit more into the spiritualist sections of the newspaper, and she, you know, read about an article that people were starting to believe that they could build machines or have different things that could talk to the dead, Mm -hmm. um, 
communing with the dead in some way, spirits yeah. and afterlives and all, all Tarot that Tarot cards and shit. Yeah. How, um, like, different scientists were trying to build things to record voices that were of spirits. Yeah. Um, and, and that is actually a legitimate thing that a lot of people were trying to do. And it is, uh, there's different um, patents for... Um, patents? Patents, patents. Okay. <laughs> That's how the British people say it. Uh-huh. Um, anyway. Patents. The patents of nobility. Yes, patents. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I've watched A Night's Tale too many times. I'm yes, sorry. Yes, you have. Um, <laughs> but they have different patents on these bizarre, like, machines that they are intending to use to record the voices of dead people. And it's... Uh, anyway, it's a it's a particular interest of mine, just these these weird little blips of scientific stuff that just didn't really work i don't know you yeah. it, it blows my mind i find it very interesting but that is not the point of what we're talking about yeah so thank I'll you let's get so, back leah no more ranting <laughs> sorry mm-hmm. all right so she was reading into these different articles and she had an idea her idea was well if i can't talk to dr anderson in person maybe one of these people can help me yeah bring this makes him up. sense i agree yeah. And talk to him in the dead, you know. Talk to him in the talk dead. Talk to him in the dead. Talking in the dead. Yeah. Um, so she wanted to find someone that could host a seance for her or teach her how to do it herself and to actually be able to contact Dr. Anderson's departed spirit. Um, and so she knew um, an, <clears throat> a, a woman in her area um, that used to she was a former slave her name was josephine um and she was a slave uh in louisiana prior to you know her her freedom um Mm -hmm. and so she was known to be a practitioner of voodoo according to the stories it could be that she was just a root worker it could be that she was a practitioner of any number of afro-caribbean um religions but voodoo is is the one that's most common and so they'll pin it on that so regardless of what the actual thing that she practiced was um you know she had uh some kind of uh folk magic that she was trying to impart to this woman um so she she talks to her and says hey I need to talk to this dead doctor. Can you make it happen? And the woman was like, I don't know, maybe. Sure, let's try sure. it. Sure. <laughs> so, um, on the next full moon, she uh, did what this lady told her to do. She met this woman at the witch's tree there in uh, Louisville, which, once again, we've talked about before. And she told her how to get in contact with the spirit of Dr. Anderson. And uh, she gave uh, Josephine some money and got all of the equipment needed to do this thing um, and went back home. So, shot in the dark. If you want a shot, you're going to need to give me your candy cane glass. All right. Oh, God, pop ups on the app. So, how did Annie Whipple communicate with the spirit realm? I don't know. How did she communicate with the spirit realm? Was it A, a talking board? Oh. B, automatic writing? Or C, tarot? What? Okay. I said tarot earlier, and I'm going to be really upset with myself. Do you know what all of the options are? I I mean, I remember automatic writing and tarot. And Uh, a talking board. Talking board. Is that a Ouija? Uh, Yes, Ouija's a brand name, but... uh, it's like a spirit board, a talking board. It's it's what you would c- call a Ouija board now. Okay, well, here, take back your glass. I'm going to say tarot. You're I incorrect. Think, damn it, motherfucker. It's automatic writing. Oh. I like those kind, too. That's always fun when they just have the pencil and they're just kind of swishing it around. And Oh, are we not doing this together? Sorry. Okay, fucking, all right, cool. I'll just do it myself, y'all. Three, two, one. Mm-hmm. I Yummy. I can help it if you're slow. <laughs> it's so good. Well, I mean, I thought we were discussing things. No. Yeah, apparently not. So. Sorry. Um, but yeah, she used... It tastes amazing, uh, so... She used automatic writing. So, um, <laughs> automatic writing is also known as psychography, uh, or maybe psychography. I'm not sure. Psychography. <laughs> I like that. Anyway, basically, it's you. You uh, 
allow a spirit to be channeled through you and you sort of blank your mind out where your hand is just moving on its own. And if you're holding a pen and paper, you know, something might come out kind of situation. Oh, a lot of people do it while they're meditating, which I find a little odd, but whatever. <laughs> Look, if I, I just, I don't know. I don't want anything that's not me writing. That's all. <laughs> okay. I want anything that's not me writing. Is that a type of writing? Me writing? <laughs> no, I'm just saying that I would be very disturbed if mm-hmm. something was coming out that wasn't me. Which is really weird because, okay, nope, I'm not going to go on a tangent again. I'm not. Leah, you can tangent all you want. Just don't do it while I'm fucking talking. Oh, okay. Cool. So, <laughs> Put my goddamn foot down. I used to um, sleepwalk really bad when I was a kid. <laughs> okay. And I really would Ugh. go... Um, uh, I, I uh, used to... I was a fucking nerd. I used to like Ugh. buy old typewriters at uh, yard sales and fix them up. Um, so I had a bunch of like typewriter parts and bullshit in my room when I was a kid. Um, and I also had my own computer in my... Anyway, I was really bad about sleepwalking and going to the computer and just typing things. Um, oh, that or is going, creepy as yeah. fuck. Leah, or, I am creeped the fuck out yeah. right now because, oh my God, yeah. what did you type? Yeah, what um, did you type? Weirdly enough, mostly it was Edgar Allan Poe poems because... Oh um, my God, Leah, I'm so fucking creeped <laughs> out. By yeah. the way, I used this excuse a few times when I was found on pornography sites. Yeah, I was sleepwalking. I don't... You woke me up. Don't wake up a sleepwalker. <laughs> don't wake up a sleep jerker. Gross. <laughs> Very gross. Oh. No, um, I, like I said, it, sometimes it was on a typewriter. Sometimes it would be on the computer. I'd, I've never like picked up a pen and written anything. It was always typing. Um, because I think it, like I had just learned to type and it was I was going through my first Poe phase and like, you know... Um, so anyway, but I would be really bad about, you know, if there was paper in the typewriter or, you know, if my computer, cause I had, I didn't have my computer password protected or anything. And if yeah. I had, you know, sometimes it was just random letters, but sometimes it would actually be like, most of the time it was like passages from Annabelle Lee or, um, you know, the Raven or something like that. I'm just being upset. really fucking creepy. Um, Ugh. so yeah, um. That was just subconscious little goth Leah being creepy, I think. Um, oh, God. I don't think I was channeling Edgar or anything, but... Uh, Is it weird to say that I might be attracted to subconscious little goth Leah? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. That is that is very disturbing. Like, everything that I just heard is disturbing. Yeah. That you would just go... Like, did you open a Word document, or were you just typing a lot of the time what i used that computer was it for mostly, like was it saved the typing uh-huh. i'm asking if the typing was saved you know well, oh did i go in and like create a file no. yeah um most of the time what i used that computer for was the word processor in it um, right. because i was very very dramatic and like to think <laughs> that i was going to be an author when i grew up there you know once was um, <laughs> shut the fuck up Mitchell. Sparrow. <laughs> stop um <laughs> But I fancied myself a writer of sorts, and so I had all sorts of, like, bullshit stories and and, uh, novellas and just, like, god-awful writing on there. But most of the time, it would, you know... And like I said, I definitely woke up in that chair a few times, and there was nothing anywhere because it wasn't, you know... But if there was a Word document open, it would be, like, a lot of scribble-scrabble with a few lines of the raven, and yeah. That is so disturbing. Yeah. Oh my God! Did it's anybody even ever catch creepier you? when there were uh, typewriters? Yeah, you, did you do that on typewriters? Yeah, that's what oh, I said. I, so I used to repair creepy. typewriters, but they were the manual typewriters, so yeah. you know, a lot of them were fucked up, and you would get every other letter or something. But you know, what are you gonna do? But yeah, yeah I was a creepy ass little kid because I I had a problem with sweet sleepwalking. I'm so so fucking creeped out. Did you ever get caught doing that? Like, did your parents? ever see you doing that sitting at the computer typing i don't think so no. but i would wake up in the computer chair a lot oh, which my desk was like a little corner desk and it had my computer and my typewriters when i was messing with them on that desk um so uh yeah i just i was a creepy fucking little kid i don't know i mean sometimes i would you know sleepwalk and go into other rooms and so yeah they they've seen me that doing that but i don't know if anybody else knew that i ever like slept typed but i did 
I'm so, so concerned <laughs> with what I know now. I haven't slept walk since probably I was in junior high. So mm-hmm. it, it it stopped. I don't yeah. know. I mean, I don't know that I've slept walk since then. Um, I, 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 was... I just have such bad insomnia now that like, yeah. I'm pretty sure I would know if I was sleepwalking. <laughs> when I was a kid, I, I don't believe that I would ever sleepwalk. But there are times when I'm sure every other child did this, when you'd fall asleep in your bed and you'd wake up in your parents' bed. Yeah. And just like, how the fuck did I get here? Yeah. That happened to me a few times. I would always fall asleep in the car and I would wake up in my bed the next morning. Yeah. Because somebody had... Carried me in. She yeah. hulked you into the house. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was a hefty child, so it was definitely well, yeah. a she-hulk. You, um, were, you were just... You were child. Yes. You were you were a uh, she-hulk child. Yes. Let's just say that. You were she-hulk. Right? Something like that. We can call you She-Hulk. Please don't. Um, <laughs> anyway, so uh, that was just a complete fucking tangent for absolutely no good oh, reason. Oh, we're still going. We are. Oh, all right. Go ahead. <laughs> so it was automatic writing. <laughs> God damn it. Not typing. Fuck Holy you, shit. I didn't know we were still talking about the <laughs> fucking question we just did. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. Oh, it's not your fault. I embraced it. I was going to say, you said I could go on a tangent. Yeah. And I did. I did. And I, I apologize did. to everyone involved. The, every bit of this is my fault. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Me too. That uh, mm-hmm. I messed up here. Yep. So anyway, <sighs> psychography. <laughs> psychography. Something like that. Excuse me. Go ahead. <sighs> oh, that that uh, shot was trying to come back. Anyway. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, basically it just means that, uh, like I said, she was going to go into some kind of trance and, and whatever spirit, hopefully the spirit of Dr. Anderson would, you know, write back to her or whatever. That's, that was the theory in any case. Yeah. So, uh, Miss Whipple sat, sat down, uh, in her room and she lit a candle and she gathered her pencil and her paper and she sprinkled this magic powder dust that Josephine gave to her and she said the incantation that josephine told her to say and then she attempted to conjure up the spirit of dr anderson so it kind of got weird and quiet and a little spooky in the room like you you know she's Mm -hmm. having a seance of course it did yeah um and it was pitch black and uh so she couldn't see anything you know just one little candle flame it was kind of flickery and weird um and so uh you know she felt a presence at her side she felt like a, a a feeling of being watched. And so she was like, oh, this must be Dr. Anderson. Sweet. I don't like um, it. And so she kind of went into this weird trance. And she, in this trance, said, hey, Dr. Anderson, little girl mm-hmm. sick. What should we do to fix her? And she kind of like... Um, kind of had a seizure kind of feeling and oh, then like no she starts uh writing and she's scrawling across the paper and flirk and deflirk you know what, yeah, whatever pencils do yeah um, they flirk and deflirk they flirk I and agree. And when she came to after the ghost had left or the spirit had dispossessed her i don't know um <laughs> repossessed dispossessed yeah you got it. unpossessed you're doing anyway, great when the spirit had left her pencil, um, she goes, you know, looks at it and it looks like a, a, a prescription, you know, that she had had been written down. And she was like, oh, sweet. Thanks, Dr. Anderson. So mm-hmm. the next morning she goes down to the pharmacy and she uh, gets whatever, you know, he had written down compounded for her. And she takes it back and she administers you know, the medicine that the ghost prescribed to this girl. And so she waited and she waited and she waited and she was hoping that the little girl would like immediately get better. And apparently it didn't work that way. Yeah. Um, And unfortunately the girl just got worse Um, and she fell into like a coma and that's not great Mm. because she's the one that gave her this crazy fucking medicine. Um, So the doctor was called in and he checked her vitals and all of that stuff and was like, yeah, sorry about it, but I'm pretty sure she's going to die by the morning. Oh, that's sorry, sad. bro. This is just not working out. Mm-hmm. Um, and so obviously it was like a shock to this lady um, mm-hmm. that had tried really, really hard and had even like tried a voodoo ritual to get this little girl to fucking 
be okay. Um, and so she ran to her room and she's crying and she tries this situation again, trying to see if she can get in contact with the doctor again, if there's anything else they can do. So she lights the candle, turns out the light, sprinkles the magical voodoo powder and starts flirking flirking again you know yep flirking flirking. Um, she's like dr anderson dude this shit is not working can you fix it uh and she you know starts scrawling a message with her wibbly wobbly hand again Mm -hmm. um and uh she's like hey what's going on and like her her pencil starts like like gouging out pieces of the wooden desk like her she's kind of like jesus stabbing the desk being all like flappy flappy like she can't control her hand and it's not like it's terrifying for her. it's it's not yeah. like a calm spirit it's a stabby pencil spirit you know um oh don't i Right. And so she's like freaking out a little bit and she can't uh, like control her own hand. She wants to get out of whatever's possessing her. Um, And it like scribbled something on there. And eventually when she comes to out of this trance, um, the words are, you fool, I am not Dr. Anderson. (laughs) Okay. This is ridiculous. Yeah, I know. This is fucking stupid. Yeah, we'll but get okay, there. Go ahead. We'll get there. Anyway. I'm with you. So um, she fell down. Uh, they, they laid her on her bed. Uh, she got really, really sick. Um, and when she finally woke up the next morning, she woke up. Um, turns out that she was most likely ill with yellow fever as well. Yeah. Um, and she woke up in time to realize that, like... She was sick and she had, you know, become very ill. And she told everybody, hey, I tried some voodoo shit. I'm sorry about it. And then she dies. Um, <laughs> That's awful. Yeah. But uh, she was able to see her last sort of thing by her bedside was the little girl that she had, you know, been trying to care for had actually gotten better and had had been revived. Um, and she mm-hmm. was doing okay. Her fever had broke. She had miraculously recovered. Um, but Annie uh, fucking died of yellow fever. So, um, it's this weird, like, voodoo uh, monkey's paw situation. I don't know. Um, but anyway, okay. the little girl lives, and she, she did what she was trying to do. But... Uh, crazy voodoo pencil guy you know crazy voodoo pencil guy (laughs) totally took her life jesus okay so that story um obviously seems a bit grandiose i believe is the way you put it um but there there was a family that did all get um you know racked by yellow fever in this particular household um there was you know a, a a nanny that also got sick and died there um and there is supposed to be an actual ghost that you know has been contacted by paranormal investigators that um you know have gone and investigated in the site. Um, people see her apparition going up and down the staircase, um, like she would have to attend the family while she was living. Yeah. Um, but the rest of it, obviously someone living in the house had a lot of fucking fun with this story. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's a great story. I love telling it, but, um, mm, the, the kernels of truth there must be few and far between. Um, because I don't think uh, she v- voodoo stabbed herself to death. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Somebody killed her, right? Huh? Somebody killed her, right? No, she got yellow fever and died. <laughs> yeah. She was Somebody taking gave care- her yellow fever. That's what point. I'm saying. Like, she was spending all of her time in that sick bed with a little girl trying mm-hmm. to fix her, and she fucking got yellow fever and died. Yeah. That's pretty much all that happened. Someone decided years later to say, hey, remember that ghost that we got? Fucking voodoo, man. Yeah. Because it's a better story. Yeah. So, like I said, a lot of these pandemic-y kind of... Um, time frames and that have ghosts attached to them a lot of the time there are stories that get embellished over the years and it just gets this huge you know grandiose thing around it when Mm -hmm. for the most part the story was the family got yellow fever she nursed them back to health but at this you know at the same time she got sick and died yeah 
because she was caring for people with yellow fever, and yellow fever is incredibly contagious. And deadly. Yep. But anyway, that story was taken from uh, a book by a man named David Dom- Domine, Domini, Domini, D O M I N E with an accent, um, and <laughs> he uh, wrote a book called "True Ghost Stories and Eerie Legends from America's Most Haunted Neighborhood," which is a, a book uh, that's full of ghost stories and folklore uh, from the historic district of uh, Louisville. Um, so, highly recommended. Lots of crazy bullshit in there, and I love it. Um, but yeah, for the most part, that is the story of the haunting of Louisville's Bourbon Inn. Well, that's <laughs> wonderful. And can we go? I would love to. Um, I liked Louisville. I've, like I said, I've only been once, but it was a lovely trip. Um, lots of horses, of Ooh. courses. Um, it was a <clears> fun <throat> time. Of courses. Yep. Yeah. I... um. I've been wanting to actually go to Louisville for a while because Cincinnati is also right there. Mm-hmm. And it, both the towns are just very interesting. Yeah, I really want to go. Yeah, we had friends that uh, did a trip like that. And that yeah. uh, the Louisville Slugger Museum is supposed to be just really fun to go through, whether mm-hmm. you like baseball or not. And you know I'm a sucker for a museum, so yep, I'm just saying I would enjoy doing that. Yeah, I would love to do it. And it's not that far for us. It's just a few hours by car. Yeah, it's not bad. But, you know, anybody out there from Louisville or Cincinnati or, <laughs> you know, whatever you do, you just you just hit us up. Let us know if we should check it out. Tell yeah. us if there's something interesting we should look at. Yeah. Somewhere haunted for us to stay. All know? that I know is that in Louisville, I think it's in Louisville, there is a gigantic liquor store That's like that Cincinnati. was in a Walmart. That's Cincinnati? Yeah, it's in Cincinnati. But it's like an old Walmart that they just made a liquor store. <laughs> and I want to go so bad. Yeah. I just want to see what they have. I'll take one of everything, please. Mm. Well, anyway, um, so yeah, that those were our stories of the evening, plus a little side tangent of how Leah used to be a creepy uh, sleepwalker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the worst part of this episode. <laughs> like, I mean, the creepiest part, you know? Yeah, like, sure, there was a voodoo lady um, that accidentally got dead but did you know <laughs> accidentally got I dead legitimately used to type things in my yeah. sleep you are a creep ass <laughs> yeah so i'm all for uh for you being the primary story of this episode <laughs> are you okay i'm fine you having trouble nope mm. Leah is licking her peppermint shot glass at the moment. Well, it's got like chocolate on the inside and it's real good. We're finishing this bottle tonight just because of these peppermint glasses. Like 10 out of 10 would recommend putting something like that in a shot glass. Yeah, chocolatey in there with it. mm -hmm. Oh, God, it's so good. Like I would just take shots of hot chocolate in a peppermint shot glass. I might drink a Starbucks Christmas blend out of this shot glass tomorrow morning. I could get down with that. Uh, we should probably put it in a Ziploc or something, oh. though, because I think flies are going to get on this Oh, definitely. Us. We need to put them in a Zippy <laughs> bag. But yeah. they also bought us um, peppermint spoons, so we oh, can just yeah. stir our coffee with the peppermint oh, spoons. Oh, fucking awesome. And oh. if anybody's interested, Amberly said she got them at Aldi's, I think, so yeah. super excited. Yeah. I've still never been to an Aldi's. There's I hear no great indicator. things. You know? I hear great things. Oh, she's brought me some amazing stuff from there, so yeah, would go. There's just not one going. nearby. Like You have to travel to go to an Aldi's, like yeah. 20 minutes or so. Yeah, you've got to go to the next town over to go to an Aldi's, and then you also have to have a quarter to rent your uh, buggy. Yeah, I don't have that kind of... <laughs> I can't do that. You just have to remember your quarter. I don't have a quarter. Can they put it on a card? No, Can you they have charge to have a physical it? quarter. Can I have an account where like at the end of the month I pay for my cart? I no. paid dollar twenty five for my cart. No, you've got a quarter that you <laughs> stick in there, and then you can, you know, once you return your cart, you get your quarter back. I'm the guy. I walk in, grab a cart, look at the nearest associate, wink, and go put it on my tab. And just but they're moving. locked into place. You can't move them until you we'll get a quarter. We'll see. We'll right. see. Once they give me a key, we'll see who's talking now. They give me a cart key. You no, know? the key is your quarter. We'll see. I, I don't quarter, think you know how this works. I have a quarter on a string. I push it in. I pull it right back out. <laughs> you have to keep the quarter in place or it doesn't go. And then I go, put it on my tab. Like, is it like bubble gum? Does it slide down a big loop-de-loop and then get to you? I so. That's what they should be doing. 
Y'all seen the Aldi's uh, cart machine? <laughs> it's huge. It goes out of the building, <laughs> and you buy a cart, and it just slides down on the on a loop to loop. That is fucking awesome. I want to do that. Let's build that. That's not how that happens. <laughs> I want to do it so bad, though. Or it could be like one of those that used to be at, you know, like a blockbuster or movie gallery. Oh, the where little... They, the the um, gumballs went through like Ferris a roller wheels and coaster, shit. Yeah. Uh, Like a roller coaster pin uh, uh, gumball machine. Yeah. That yeah. was so fun because our movie gallery had one of those, but they would also have the little clear balls that had uh, like a free movie rental or like 20 bucks in them. Mm-hmm. And I remember one time my mom gave me a quarter to get a gumball and I was so excited because I love big gumballs. Like that yeah. was, a, I, it was great. Um, anyway, <laughs> I put my quarter in and I cranked it over and I get the, you know, it's got the flashing lights and it shoves it through this, you know, elaborate track system and I go to pull it out and I got one of those fucking clear plastic balls with a $20 bill in it and I was furious because I wanted a goddamn gumball so bad and I was like, Mom, I didn't get gumball! And she's like, what? And I don't even think it was a 20 I'm pretty sure it was like a 50 oh my It was God. something, it was a bunch of money and my mom was like, holy shit, Leah. Yeah. Are yeah. you okay? Like it, you. We're taking you back to it's the a pound. Fifty dollars. She said, and uh, I was like, "But I wanted a gum ball." Anyway, she gave me um I was say, another her, quarter. Get another so fucking it was quarter. Fine. It shut your little yappy mouth. I got fifty bucks. We about to rent movies for days. Anyway, I gave her the fifty dollar bill, and she gave me a quarter, so <laughs> it was fun. Yeah, that's an even trade. That's like when you were a kid, and your brother would trade you his nickels for your dimes yeah. because the nickels were bigger, so they definitely equaled more. Yeah, right? my brother had me convinced that nickels were worth more than dimes. And so when we, uh, yeah. you know, rolled coins and stuff like that, uh, I would give him all of my dimes because they were smaller. And he yeah. was just a dime collector, so he was being a nice big brother. Think of where we would be right now. He we would cheated be millionaires. Me out of dollars. We would be so millionaires. many dollars. If you take all the dimes that you gave him, put them into investment accounts, where would we be right now? Where would we be? Dollars more yeah. wealthy than we are we now. We would have millions, Leah. Do you know what <laughs> what 70 cents was worth in 1993? Like 76 cents. cents? Now, today, it's at least $4 million. <laughs> at least. That's why your brother's so much better off. He's got all those dimes <laughs> sitting there he's accruing just been interest. He's stockpiling dimes. Yeah. Forget the fact that, that he's a le- literal rocket scientist. It's, it's Forget not that. that he, he got a master's degree and <laughs> yeah. is really good at math and shit and works for the government. No. It's... No. Why do you think he's so good at math, Leah? He took all your fucking dimes <laughs> and added them up. Ugh. <sighs> I'm, I'm furious. Um, like, he I'm owes not... us. At least six bucks. Look, he made us the best uh, homemade pizza with like homemade focaccia, homemade yep. sauce, homemade everything. Oh, yeah. That makes up for all Holy the dimes shit. he took. Yeah. Yeah, it certainly does. Do you know how Fuck. expensive pizza is, especially homemade pizza? <sighs> Fuck you, Leah. God. I'm so upset. That was the best focaccia I, I've ever put in my mouth. I'm upset that you're not more upset about this. Look, I can be bought with carbs. That's all I'm saying. I can be bought five cents at a time. <laughs> Bring it right back. <laughs> Five cents in early 90s money at a time. I'm there. Yeah, well, sorry about it. <laughs> I'm furious. Somebody owes us quite a bit of money at this point. I bet he took every one of those dimes and put them right in the bank. It's like, Grandma, do you know how to invest this for me? He actually stored all of his money in um, mini m M&M tubes. Oh, did you take it all? No. Like, I mean, mm. that's what he would do. He would uh, store them in those, you know, the tubes that mini M&Ms used to yeah, come in. He used awesome. to store his different coins in that, and then he would roll them all and keep them in a chest, and then he would take them all to the bank at once, because he was a mm. very organized child about his money. Yeah. I used to, as a kid, at the beginning, I think I've told this before, at the beginning of every school year, we would find all the change that we had in the house, roll it all, take it... T- not even take well yeah we would take it to the bank we wouldn't take it to one of those change machines because they take yeah they take a percentage like 10 percent. Mm-hmm. so we would actually roll it all and take it and i would get a new pair of shoes for school every year because yeah. we had like a hundred dollars in change every year that's ridiculous yeah people when don't my, use change anymore though so yeah i mean i i never really used a whole lot of change but my dad mm-hmm. worked at a plant and so they had uh like snack machines and stuff like that that you would go to on break that yeah. took 
coins and stuff like that. So he always had a ton of change in his pockets. So, uh, and he would be bad about not clearing them out when he did his laundry, you know, Mm -hmm. his overalls and all of that stuff. So when we had to, I remember it was in high school when we had to get a new dryer because the old one crapped out. It was a real (laughs) old dryer too. Um, Because it was like 600 pounds overweight with all the change. Yeah, like we pulled it out there and uh, we were like, this is really fucking heavy. And anyway, dad took it outside (laughs) and decided to shake it out. He, no joke, got like $180 out of that fucking dryer um, just in quarters and shit that had just been dried and like lost in the dryer over the years. He shook out like 180 bucks. You know, I wish that I could report something that happy, but since you don't go to work anymore, this doesn't really happen. You know, you're at home working. Yeah. But the the best thing that comes out of our laundry is used tissues. (laughs) That Leah keeps in her fucking pockets and also doesn't clean her pockets out. Shoves them into the laundry machine. I get them out of the dryer and there's just flakes of paper towels and tissues just everywhere. (laughs) Fucking everywhere. But like I said, that doesn't happen a lot anymore because she doesn't have tissues and things to put in pockets because she just leaves them on the table now. (laughs) So I go pick them up there. Hey, I pick up most of my own trash now. (laughs) Shut up. I've picked up lots of your trash. So shut up. That's true, too. Since you're here all the time, you do pick up a lot more trash than I do now. But the laundry is still kind of hit or miss at this point. Look. Go ahead. I do the dishes. Leave me alone. Leah, we have been rambling for a very long time. Let's Maybe do a toast. Cut off half of that and just no. toast on top no, of No, people it. need to know how embarrassing your pockets are. <laughs> I am really bad about washing things in my pockets. Not gonna lie. Yeah, I've pins, lost so many chapsticks that way. Pins, chapsticks, because the tube's there, but the chapstick is fucking gone. <laughs> so many chapsticks. <laughs> I mean, God, why didn't even? I, why didn't I think about that? There's at least as many chapsticks as tissues. At least. See, I one time I even like went on a mission to use a chapstick up like it was a big like mango butter um lip balm that i got from walmart and i was so excited it was a good one (laughs) and i had kept it up and i had it to like where it was almost just a little nub at the bottom and i was like i'm gonna fucking finish this sucker it's gonna be the first chapstick that i've ever finished in my life i came so close and then i washed the goddamn thing (laughs) yep and the thing is if you don't wash them the dog eats them anyway our dog loves chapstick. And like when we put on chapstick or face lotion, she has to lick your face, too. It's awful. She goes anyway. right for it. So, yeah, Leah's irresponsible. But can we get to a toast instead? Yeah, Leah, this was my fault. Sorry. Again. <laughs> Go ahead. Everybody hoist your peppermint goblet high into oh, the sky. We're going to be doing a toast. <clears throat> Here we go. Men are going to drink and men are going to dally. But Doc got stabbed strolling. Right down Chicken Alley. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Poor guy. Sorry. Anyway, uh, if you know what you're doing... Oh, sorry. Let let me try that again. All right. If you don't know what you're doing, just stay out of the voodoo. You're going to get an asshole ghost and wind up in deep doo-doo. Oh, Leah. Drink. No, I don't accept this. It's what you're getting. I don't... (laughs) This is what I'm offering. This is on the table. That's all there is. Take it or don't. Well, you know, not bad this week, Leah. Not bad. She said earlier, it's not the best thing I've ever done, but, you know, it'll it'll do. And she slammed the laptop You get what you get and you don't pitch a fit. Oh, nice. That's so cute. You should uh, write more toasts like that. That one rhymed. What? The get what you get? Yeah. No, that's an Amberly saying, too. (laughs) I know. I'm just saying you should write it. Just like that. Oh, well, sorry. Strive for that level of greatness. I just need more mom friends with other sayings. Yeah. Just recycle them. Well, you did your best. And I'm proud of you. That was an okay toast this time. Thanks. All right, y'all. We've been rambling for a really long time. You ready to close it out? Surely. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Join the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Southern Spirits Podcast. Get us some more beer money. Or, uh, you know, we might just go buy some peppermint shot glasses. Now that I know that's a thing, we can just stock up on them. I think they're seasonal. Well, we'll figure it out. Send us an email, southernspiritspodcast at gmail.com. Send us any postcards or any other fun physical items to P.O. Box 1743, Hartsell, Alabama, 35640. 
Watch Leah's YouTube channel, Craft Apocalypse, if you like crafting and storytelling. Um, anybody that listens to this probably doesn't like stories, though, right? <laughs> I'm just messing around, Leah. She she actually won't talk because the shot glass is in her mouth. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I love peppermint. Yeah, um, you do. Yeah. All right, that's it. Everybody, thank you for being here, and we will see you next time. Bye, y'all. Bye.